Hey there. Normally after a biggish project, after I finish a biggish project, in this case working on the Wego, I like to take some days to either have what most people would call a normal weekend or to fiddle fart around the shop and just do things. And this time I chose to rearrange my shop because I like to do that. If I cared about my house, I'm sure I would be the type of person to rearrange my furniture every couple of months. Anyway, uh, this restaurant booth seating that I have, I moved it to here where the cars used to be. And I moved all my cars over to this wall, so I have a straight shot out the garage door, making them easier to get in and use instead of what I was having to do before, which was get in the car and then make a 13-point turn to get out the door each time, which made me less likely to get in any of these cars and go out the door, including that one over there that I have blacked out that you're not supposed to see yet. And I moved my presentation area to over here, right next to the workbench. There was a leg of the workbench that came out right about here. I think it stopped, like, here or something. I took that off. I didn't really need it anyway. It was just gathering junk because it's a horizontal surface. And that's my new workbench, a little bit smaller. Moved the toolboxes over there. And uh, I, this will be a good work area, like a legitimate work area. I've got an extension cable right here hanging down from the ceiling, etc., etc. And the only real downside is that I'm now presenting right underneath the mini split. I don't think that's going to be a problem. But I did have to move my backdrop board here down just a little bit to make room for the mini split. But yeah, this is where my presentation area is. And because I like to rearrange my shop so often, it probably won't stay here, but it'll be here for at least several months. And I got myself a water cooler, so I'll drink more water. And I can have office gossip with myself. Hey, did you hear about Jenny from accounting? Jenny from accounting? You're the accounting department. No. Oh. oh yeah, and the Wego, it's dead. The only positive news I had at the end of the last video was that the onboard car charger was working and the car was taking a charge. But then that stopped and it's not taking a charge anymore. It's just flashing red and telling me that nah, I'm not going to do anything. So it's, it's dead. I've just got it sitting here. I do have the 12 volt battery in the front hooked up to a battery tender. So at the very least with it sitting here doing nothing, that 12 volt battery won't die. Unless I leave it sitting here for 10 years, then it probably won't last that long. But yeah, we go the battery pack be dead. So let's discuss options for the Wego. What am I going to do with this thing in the future? And let's head over to my newly located presentation area. Hey there! First things first. You like my new presentation area? It's just like the old one, but in a different part of the shop. And there's no white wall over here and the board's a little bit lower and there's a mini split over my head. That's about it. Anyway, first things first, I want to make something very clear about my plans with the Wego. I'm going to keep it a Wego. And by that, I mean I'm not going to modify it at all. I'm going to keep it as original as possible. And the reason for that is quite simple. They didn't make very many Wego lights. They made less than 100 of them. And who's going to keep them around? They're not worth anything. They're terrible cars. I feel a sense of duty keeping that thing around just as a little piece of history. Maybe the guy from Wego will be keeping around some Wegos. Maybe they'll be functional, too. I don't know, but I, I'm not going to modify and I'm not going to strip parts from it, even though there's a lot of good off-the-shelf electric car components in there that I could rob for other things. I'm going to keep it as a Wego, just for piece of history-ness. Now, the battery cells in the Wego, I forgot to mention this in the last video, and I, this was a big, bit of a big oversight. The battery cells are 260 amp hour Thunder Sky cells or Winston cells. They say, they say Thunder Sky on them, but when you look them up, they, they're made by Winston. I don't know which was which. So they're 260 amp hour LiPo 4 cells made by Thunder Sky slash Winston. Don't know which is which. And they can be found, I can find replacements for about $300 a pop. So if I wanted to replace all the cells in the battery pack, that would run me a cool $11,000, <laughs> which is a lot of money on a car that terrible. So I'm not going to be doing that. And a lot of you suggested in the comments of the last video, well, why don't you just replace that one balloony cell? Because if it's ballooned, that means the internal resistance of that cell is higher. And since they're all the cells are wired in series, that's going to be limiting the entire battery pack because of the internal resistance of that one cell, which is a good point. However, it wasn't just that one cell that was balloony. I get that that was the information you would take that from that video if you just watched the video, because that's how I presented it and edited it together. I just pointed out the one cell that was balloony. But the reality is that there's a little bit more than one cell that had inflated. At least half, if not more than half, of the battery cells in that battery pack had inflated at least a little bit. 
So that's 18, maybe more, cells that have inflated and have a higher internal resistance. They're bad cells, all 18 of them. Now I could go through and replace those 18 bad cells, but first of all, I don't wanna spend that kind of money right now on a car that's that terrible. I'm, I'm gonna do that in the future when I'm ready to spend thousands of dollars replacing some bad battery cells in a bad car, but also, the cells that are good probably won't be far behind the bad cells. So it, the best thing to do would be to replace all the battery cells in that battery pack. And I would prefer to not replace them with the battery cells that came out of it just because they're very expensive compared to newer Life 404 technologies. Now, a common question that was asked was, here, let me take this apart. See, I'm not just fiddling with this for no reason. This was a talking point. There we go. Anyway, common question that was asked was, why don't you upgrade the battery pack in the WeGo from LiPo 4 cells to these, the standard lithium ion 18650 battery cell? And that's a good idea. And it's something I was contemplating because you could theoretically take a bunch of these little individual cells and parallel them up to make replacement battery cells for the WeGo and then series them together in 36 to have the same size battery pack. But there's one problem with that and that is the voltage rating. The voltage rating on a LIFEPO4 cell is 3.2 volts nominal, 3.65 volts at the charging cutoff. 18650 cells are 3.6 volts nominal, hence why there's five of them to make an 18 volt battery. And the charging cutoff is 4.2 volts. So the voltages don't match up at all. So I'd have to replace the chargers, I'd have to replace the BMS modules, or at the very least change the settings in the BMS modules and there's some other things that wouldn't add up to make, I'd have to modify a lot of things to account for the different voltages. I'm not ex exactly sure of the extent I'd have to modify it, but although these would be a huge upgrade over the LifePo 4 cells, if not less stable, they would be more energy dense, uh, it just, it wouldn't work easily. And like I said, I wanna modify the WeGo as little as possible. So, what I think I'm going to do, and again, this is way in the future when I'm ready to pony up thousands of dollars for a battery pack in a terrible car. What I think I'm going to do, instead of replacing the cells in the car with exact, exactly the same cells that I buy new, is get some smaller, like 100 amp hour cells that are probably, they'll probably be smaller in dimensions by this point in time, because battery technology has moved on, even for life po 4 cells. Get like three 100 amp hour cells that I can parallel together and get a bunch of those. And if I have three of them parallel together, that would be a replacement for one cell and then rearrange the battery pack so that it appears to have, to the computers anyway, 36 LifePo 4 cells all series together, even though there could be triple that amount of cells in there. And then, I'm having trouble wording this, but I think you understand what I'm saying. Just replace each individual old cell in there with three, two, three, four, whatever of the new ones parallel together and just make a new battery pack out of that. So none of the electronics have to change, the chargers, none of that, because all the voltages would be the same if I just wired up so that the, there's 36 individual cells in there and there's they're wired in series to make a 115 volt battery pack. That's my plan with the WeGo. But again, that's gonna wait until I'm ready to pony up that kind of money for a terrible car's battery pack. So that's the plan anyway. Now, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna put a Trabant engine in the WeGo, although that would be hilarious. Maybe I'll get a second WeGo that has been previously poorly modified or destroyed or something, and you know, that's not gonna happen. Anyway, that's the plan with the WeGo. I gotta put this battery pack together so I can use it. Thanks for watching, see you next time.